All right, welcome back. This is the third video on the GoLug meeting. It started on July 3rd, 2019. We're having a virtual meeting. Uh, I'm using a Jitsi server to serve the video conference or start and uh, use the video conference. So I will turn back on the audio and we'll continue listening to the presentation that's given by uh, a man called Robert Lefervre. Let's let's continue. Interested in selling, you might be interested in buying web traffic. If you're selling products, how are you getting traffic to your site? So you can advertise for free in our network. Now traffic is going to be coming to your, your site by your site being listed on 500,000 pages, right? So somewhere in, uh, at each end, okay, um, and we have bloggers who probably won't buy, ever buy web traffic. They, they're, they're trying to sell their content and make money from their content. Then up a little bit from bloggers is some that might blog as part of their business, but they also have a business too. Um, a lawn guy who blogs and then he's blogging to get traffic to his site and gain lawn business. Um, in the middle, it's kind of like bartering that hopefully your income that you can spend to buy more traffic balances itself off. And then at the end, there's large corporations who have never installed this in a million years, but they want to get into our user base or, or our customer base and want to advertise in front of them. So this, this whole thing has a, a, a called a multi-stakeholder cooperative because people are coming at this, like you mentioned, Steve, from their own perspective, they own it, and this briefly talks about three different kinds of potential cooperatives. There's a consumer cooperative, and in our case, that would be people who are buying web traffic, and we do not represent them at all. Then there's producer cooperatives, and a good example of that would be um, Ocean Spray Cranberry Juice. That is owned by 80 cranberry growing families, and they created a marketing cooperative called Ocean Spray. Right. Now, in a worker cooperative, um, is one where, um, let's see, they get paid for working in the cooperative and they share the profits. That the company makes. Well, Mana Network is both a producer and a worker cooperative. Um, but when they sell the advertising, they're acting as a worker. When they install the script, it's aggregating web traffic, it's building the product, so they're a producer too. So, this one is the same bell curve, and basically the point of this is that we, we're working to get the sellers the most income for their product, and we're trying to take the buyers to the cleaner and get them to pay as much as we can. Okay, so we have three three earner levels. We have the enterprise, the professionals, the members, which is the small to medium websites. And we also have an affiliate program that people can do from their phone. So you, you ask, Steve, you know, does somebody have to have a website? Actually, no. They'll be able to do it from a phone. They'll be able to go into a restaurant and look up and see if the, the restaurant owner is advertising there. And if not, they could sell them advertising from their phone. But they won't get as much of a commission as those with the website. They only get half as much. All right. This might get too complicated, but maybe not. Let me try to explain it. Okay. What? Say that again. Okay. So a seller who sells an advertiser advertising, which means that the person buying signed up at their website or at their affiliate connection. Okay. So in the case of a 
of a member date, the seller receives 50% perpetually for as long as that buyer buys advertising. The affiliate receives 25%. So that seller signed up somewhere. So the recruiter of that seller receives half of the remaining 50% or 25%. The next up line that recruited the recruiter receives half of the remaining 25%. And, and eventually, depending on how many uplines there are, um, it ends up at the MANA network, which could end up as a fraction of a percentage. Okay, growth projection. This goes back to that chart of Amazon being number two. WordPress operates 34% of the internet sites. Our network enables them to earn Bitcoin in five minutes. 3% adoption by WordPress users equals 1.12% of internet sites, which would make Nano Network the number two ad network. With just 3% adoption by just WordPress users. Um, I think earning Bitcoin in, in five minutes is a pretty good incentive to get the plugin installed. And of all the, I have yeah. to ask you a quick question. Um, in terms of when you're saying Bitcoin, I know a lot of people in the mainstream will think of Bitcoin as the ten, eleven thousand dollar Bitcoin. Is is that because that's a huge incentive for people just look at it from a money standpoint? Okay, um, I'm actually a Bitcoin SV supporter. Uh, Same. That's, I just want to clarify that because yeah. a lot of people don't really understand the adoption and the tech behind SV. So, right. No, I'm, I'm mainstream not. adoption might be a little more questionable. Right. But but see, but while we have this, um, there there is also a peer to peer exchange built into this system, and the, the way that it works is suppose your website you've earned. Um, <coughs> Couple hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin. You sign, you sign somebody up with free advertising, and they want to bid for better position. They've never done Bitcoin before; they have no idea. But they, they want to, um, they want to get some Bitcoin so they can get better position. Our system has a peer-to-peer -peer exchange where you can transfer the earnings that you have to them so that they can bid. And you basically can negotiate any transaction, any deal, including a cash deposit to your bank if you want, um, before you make the transfer. And um, so that, that can be used by itself. Um, but and on the other hand, I've been through the mill. I've been in Bitcoin for six years now. I started when it was ten dollars. I built the bidding, the, ad, the bidding system when it was when it was climbing up to thousand dollars, and I realized that you, that's why it's it's um it, it's adaptive to huge things in Bitcoin um, prices. And when I say Bitcoin, it's Bitcoin, it's Bitcoin. Okay. So, so when, when somebody pays um, 0 0.1 Bitcoin to be in the number one position and the price doubles in dollar terms, they will be paying twice as much for their position. They will probably want to adjust their bid downward, but they lose, there's some gain for it. They lose seniority. Uh, and but then somebody who's in number two or three will pay a lot less. They might hold on to their position, figuring that the price is going to come back down, and now they'll be number one with seniority. So it's got it's got some really interesting gaming, and so even though the price is fluctuating, there's other considerations besides price for maintaining their bidding. Also, if somebody has installed the script, they 
will be receiving a commission on their own purchases. So they're receiving a 50% rebate for whatever they buy, which greatly affects um, their game theory. Uh, uh, a sudden increase or decrease in Bitcoin price only affects them half as much as somebody from the outside. So it, it's got some um, pretty cool game theories going on in the bidding. So here's just another stat from that same outfit, WordPress. It's on 34% of the website. And Bitcoin price. Okay, conclusion. It's a free multi-level business opportunity. A Bitcoin-related business opportunity. The only cooperative member-owned ad network. Every customer is a manufacturer, and the current production is all going to waste. Ta-da! Drum roll, please. Thank you, people. Nice presentation, Robert. Thank you, Steve. I thought you guys might be like, ah, get rid of this guy, get rid of this guy. Thank you. I need, I need to practice. I read uh, just the opportunity to present, so I do appreciate everybody sitting through that. How long did it take me? An hour? No. 45 minutes? About an hour. When did we start? 705? Yeah. But you guys were good. You asked a lot of questions, too. and gave me a lot of feedback. Well, that's true. Yeah. Sorry. So what do you think of Max? Yeah, Robert, it's, uh, it was a good it was a good presentation. Thank you. Thank you. How about Florence? Was it what you expected? Um, I didn't know what to expect. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. It, it sounds interesting, but it was the first time ever that I saw something like that, so uh, I, I didn't understand everything, so there were some things that I didn't understand. Okay, let me add, can I get some feedback on, on like, your background? That, um, so you're in web development now, are you a beginner? Do you yeah. Have a okay. I'm a student at Seminole State, so I just started this semester. Okay, so so you you not run your own website? No. Okay, so when I started with websites, this was ran back around 2000, I think is when I started building them. Um, you get all this excitement about putting out a website and you throw it out. I don't know if people are as naive now as they. I was when I started, but you probably remember Steve. You think, oh, I'm going to put this website and everybody's going to come to it. The whole world's going to know about me. And you put it out there and you realize, no. And you have to fight and scramble to get people to come to your website. And so this is birthed out of that realization and, and the opportunity to get free web traffic to your site is pretty much all but gone. Right? You either pay through the nose for SEO, search engine optimization, as that, that, that um, statistic showed, or you pay per click. There's something really outrageous. What's that? Uh, one way you can get traffic is to do something really outrageous, and everyone starts talking go. about it. Yeah, and the social network is the latest attempt to get free web traffic. So. But in that case, in the, in the social networking, you're creating content and you're giving that away to the social network. So it's, it's basically everybody's getting their web content and the value of their web content stolen from them. So I think what this does, it gives them almost like a royalty because if you sell advertising, it's a long-term income stream from just one little visit. And um, 
yeah, there's a little bit of lottery involved. Like, you could be, you could have an article about growing petunias. And if you did paper click, the, 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 the payments you would get from Google for an article on petunias would probably be pretty small. But if, sorry about that, I'm grinding coffee here. But if you um, had an article about petunias, here comes another one. No, and if you and if you you had a visitor from McDonald's and they read the article on petunias and they just happened to be connected to the advertising department and signed up and spent tens of thousands of McDonald's money to advertise them because they found you through the article on petunias. That, that would be kind of be like hitting the lottery, you know. But that's possible. Oh. All right. Well, thank you, Robert. Okay. Um, All right. So the next. Pre By the way, uh, I have two presentations to give. One is mine. One is uh, uh, Gary Miller's. Does, is anybody else presenting tonight? Okay. Uh, I've got a 20-minute presentation and a 10-minute presentation. Uh, the first one's on ASCII Doctor. Um, okay, who knows how I, how do I, um, I want to share my screen rather than my face. How do I do that? Share your screen? Yeah, so you can see my screen. The left bottom corner, maybe? What? The left bottom corner says share your screen. Left, yeah, left bottom corner. There it is. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's the end of Robert's uh, presentation. Now we're starting with the next presentation. This is going to be done by, by the GoLug founder, uh, Steve. So, stand by for me. <laughs>